people think of Prince, they think genius, producer, performer, dancer, guitar player, piano player, but the last thing you really think of is acoustic guitar player. And this man, oh, he is so tasteful with his acoustic guitar. So I want to check out one of these like classic videos you see on YouTube of him performing his song Cream and what he does to make it sound really, really dope. And one of the things that you gotta know is how to throw in those cool guitar fills. Now one of the great things about this song is it's gonna help you lock in your groove and especially help you put fills in while staying in that groove. Now it's very hard to do if you haven't done it before. So first we're gonna lock in our groove and then we're gonna look at some of these really cool ideas uh, that Prince does to throw in some fills, all right? So let's start with the groove. It's really simple. A B flat chord right here on the sixth fret. Now what he does, he uses his thumb. <laughs> And a lot of the times, you might not even hear that low note, that bass, it's just these two, so you can get that nice vibrato. It's thrown between those right there. But we're gonna start with this. Now it's a very rock song, so it's pretty straight, even eighth notes and all that. But the trick to this groove, especially on acoustic guitar, is this little bang on two and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So the very first thing we want to do is get comfortable with that and just lock that in nice and even and just feel that groove. Now the song is pretty simple. It's really just like a one, four, five for the most part. So after our one chord, we just jump over to the four. Right there. So let's look at how we're going to play the verse. Then we're going to throw in a fill right after that. Let's look at it again. We're going to go slow. And just grab those top two strings. And that's my vibrato right there. That's what I'm going to do that. And then I go over to my E flat and just nice even eighth notes. That, a, uh, that B flat is going to come an eighth note early. One and two and three and four and one. And each time, that's the, the vocal part, right? And then we got this next measure to throw in our fill. So let's go over that one more time. Now one of the tricks too about this whole style is we always want to be feeling that eighth note. We always want to be going like this. So whether I'm hitting notes or not, my hand is still feeling that groove, that eighth note, all down strums. Well, maybe not all down strums, so I wanna, I wanna get that. But for the most part, I'm feeling that. So I wanna be able to lock that in before I can. first fill is going to be right there. So we're in the key of B flat and I want to find my B flat major pentatonic scale which is right here. And the bluesy thing to do is just hammer hammer on those uh, double stops like that. And this is a very Hendrixy thing to do. Uh, Prince was a big Hendrix fan and uh, and you just hear it a lot in this playing right here. So we go like this. Really simple, just those first two strings are the A and the D string, and then the D and the G. And we're just gonna end right there on the F note, and then we continue on. Now, this is a little bit more of a classic bluesy line. And we're going to look at this major pentatonic scale right here. All right, there's our B flat. So I could just look at that almost like an extended pentatonic thing. Major. So I'm just going to go like that. And then we go. Very cool little bluesy idea. Um, so I'm going to start in these middle two strings, just like a minor third uh, interval. Down to that B flat. And one of the things that we really want to do is have it very staccato, very da, 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 and you get that. Yeah, that 
that kind of classic little move. Now both these fills are very similar rhythmically and they also start in the exact same place which is generally uh, what you want to shoot for when you're doing a fill because it's always, not always, but it's mostly going to be the same space, the same area. So you want to get used to that to really, again, lock in with the groove and just, you don't want too much unexpected stuff when it comes to locking in a groove. So each of these fills is going to start on the third beat just like this. One, two, and three. Right? One, and two, and three. And usually when I'm trying to find something on the third beat, I don't try and count to three. I just count the beat before and I know that it's the next beat. All right, one and two and ba da ba ba da ba, right? One, two, and I can just count that, this first two beats. One, and two, and Now this next fill gets even bluesier and we start with this upper voicing for the B flat seven. This could be right there, right? And you can almost think of the shape as like a D seven if you know like one of those D seven shapes. Uh... All right, that right there, and we move that all the way up. So we got the B flat seven shape, but you don't have to use this one. We could just do the top three strings. So we're gonna slide into that, and we're gonna slide down into the B flat uh, major pentatonic. All right, and I want to see that B flat major chord right there. And I could go around with this bluesy pentatonic idea. All right, top two strings. And then this uh, trill with that major third. Very common bluesy thing. Now this one is a little bit different, okay? This one actually comes on the second beat. So we gotta be ready for this one if we wanna bring this in uh, the way that he does. So it comes in really quick. So let's try this from the verse. bit slower. And then going into the chorus, he does this nice little break with his vocals running, and then he just does a simple uh, major acoustic run again. And it's just like that. He's taking those top two strings from our chord, and then over to this pentatonic shape. And then the chorus is quite simple. It's kind of like the same thing, right? We're going from this power chord-y shape to those top two strings. And then just right there, again, a bluesy pentatonic thing. Into our F chord. And just repeat that for our chorus. Last turn around for the ending is G minor, A flat major to B flat. And what we want to do is just get that low power chord and then upstroke for the, like, that chord. Maybe just on the G string and the D. And the same thing for the A flat. So staying around those lower strings gives it all kind of like this fatter, Again, rocky feel, right? Rock is very power chordy and, and straight and even and just doom, 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 you know? That's what we want. Now, one more cool bluesy feel that he does is, you know, kind of like a classic blues lick. And I really like a lot of things that he does here, including this lick coming up because he does this classic thing where you mix major and minor blues, even though I don't really like to think about it like that, but that's kind of what it is, right? So we're sliding into the major third, and then you're grabbing that minor third. So you're going from major, and then you're getting into the minor uh, pattern. So this is the major part. And then 
That's our minor part. Again, I don't like to think of it like that, um, but according to the patterns that you may know, that's kind of what it is. Uh, but this is major blues, and in major blues, man, you really mix those things up and it sounds sweet. So in with the groove, it's gonna be like this. This fill comes in on three also, so I can go one and two and one and two and. Now all these bluesy licks are super dope, um, so they're a lot of fun to play. But again, the challenge is keeping that groove and keeping that just that feel all up with it, and then you could try improvising your own things around these patterns, right? So we have three different patterns that we used. We use this pentatonic pattern right here in the third position. And kind of thinking like the Hendrixy moves. And then we have this. This uh, pentatonic pattern. And then we have kind of the classic one. But including that uh, that awesome B flat seven chord right there. And if you don't know about this this little trill, that's a common thing that you would hear in blues too. That sounds uh, nice and kind of a classic bluesy move. So you got a double stop against the G and the B string, and then you're hammering onto the G string seventh fret. So now the challenge is to keep the groove going. Put those fills in without losing the groove. And if you want to really level up, try and improvise your own fills while keeping the groove. So jam that acoustic guitar, keep that groove going, and bust out those blues fills. If you want the tabs for everything that I played, check me out on patreon.com slash nasty soul. Keep jamming and stay nasty.